In this video, we'll train a bipedal walker using the free version of Google Colab. By the end of this video, we'll train the bipedal walker from this to this. So I've prepared two Google Colab files. First, we'll start with the basic one. In this notebook, we'll explore the environment setup, build the model, train and evaluate it, and then capture a video of the trained walker. In the second notebook, we'll go a bit further. We'll not only train the model, but we'll also document its journey by producing videos at different training intervals. By the end, we'll stitch these together, giving us a consolidated video of the walker's entire learning journey. Also, we'll upload our trained model to the Hugging Face Model Hub, the most popular platform for sharing your ML models. We have a lot to cover, so let's dive in. All right, I've got the first notebook here opened up. One side note, for this guide, I won't delve deep into every single detail. My primary focus is to demonstrate the workflow and the connectivity of its components. If you have questions, drop a comment or just ask ChatGPT. First thing we want to do is to navigate to the notebook settings and make sure we have Python 3 and using the GPU. Once we have that, we can start to connect to a runtime. After we've done that, our initial task is the setup. We'll begin by installing all the necessary libraries. So look at the first line. We're installing some system packages. These tools lay the groundwork for simulation and multimedia functions in our training environment. Then we'll move on to the Python packages. We're using the stable baseline 3. It's a set of reliable implementations of reinforcement learning algorithms in PyTorch. Also, the Gymnasium library, it's an API standard for reinforcement learning with many reference environments. Specifically, we're going to use the Box2D environment. Plus, we're also using Hugging Face for model uploads and some other libraries for video creation purposes. Let's execute the first cell. This will take a couple minutes, so I'll speed things up and we'll come back once it completes. With the installation behind us, I'm just going to clear the output so you can see better. Let's go on to the next cell to give the notebook runtime a restart. This step just ensures all our newly installed libraries are ready for use. As we can see, it has finished restarting. Following that, we'll start our virtual display. Note that we're not seeing anything yet because the virtual display is just running in the background. Later, we'll actually record a video and display it on the screen. Next is setting up the training environment. To do that, we'll just first import the gymnasium library. Then we'll just define environment as uh, gym.make. In this case, we're using the bipedal worker. We're also going to turn on the hardcore mode. This just have more obstacles in the environment. Lastly, we just need to reset the environment. Okay, so let's just take a deeper look at the environment we're using. First is the observation space. As we can see here, in this environment, the observation space is a vector of 24, where each value contains different information about the walker, such as the speed and the positions. Next, let's look at the action space. This means that what actions are the walker actually is taking. As we can see here, we have a shape of 4. These four types of actions are motor speed values between negative 1 to 1 for each of the joint of the walker at its hips and knees. Essentially, training is about refining these actions based on performance. So to wrap up our environment setup, we're going to vectorize it. It's a method for stacking multiple independent environments into one so that our walker can have a more diverse experience. In this case, I'm using 16. Now I hope you have a rough understanding of the environment. If there's any questions, I encourage you to check out the official documentation, link in the description. All right, we have our environment set up. Now we can build our model for training. To do this, actually, it's pretty simple. We're just going to use the stable baseline 3 and use the PPO algorithm for the model. PPO stands for Proximal Policy Optimization. It's one of the state-of-the-art deep reinforcement learning algorithms. For now, we don't need to know all the details. We can just use it. So here we'll say PPO and inside here we'll have our training policy and environment. In addition, I'm putting here other parameters so you can experiment around to see what combination works the best. 
If you want to learn more about the parameters, you can go to the documentation page, also link in the description. So before we start training the model, I just want to set up the helper functions to help us with the video generation. I think we don't need to get into details about this. Just know that this function will take our model and generate a mp4 file for us. Feel free to look at how it works if you are interested. For now, we'll just run it and move on. With all that, we're ready to train the model. To do that, we can just use one line of code, which is model learn. And here inside, we're defining the total time steps. Let's start with 1000 steps. And each step is one action taken by the walker. Then we can just name our model and save it. Run this. All right, now we have successfully trained our model. Next, we'll record a video of our bipedal worker and display it on the screen. For this, we'll use the function we have defined in step three, and we need to supply it with the model and our environment. Because we're using a vectorized environment, we need to use the vectorized function for that and wrap it in a monitor. For the video length, I'm using 1000, which is 20 seconds. We can save it just in a root folder and run this. All right, we can see that a video has been generated. Now, at this point, you can also download it and view it locally. But I just want to pull it up and show it here. So the next cell will help us embed the video in the notebook environment. Just run this and let's take a look. Whoa, oops. Okay, clearly with only 1000 steps, it's not a very good walker. Let's just run the evaluation process. This helps us quantify the results. As we can see, it currently has a pretty low negative score. But let's increase the steps by a thousand times and give it another try. So instead of a thousand, we can try 1 million steps. And I will just run this. We'll come back once it's done. All right, it has finished 1 million steps. Let's generate another video and take a look. OK, let's pull this up and play it again. OK, as you can see, the walker actually started to walk. It's not great yet, but if you want, you can train it for more steps. Let's run the evaluation process again. OK. Well, this time the evaluation score has increased quite a bit. You can feel free to play with it more. Now that we have trained the model and record a video, I think it would be cooler if we can record videos during the training process at different time intervals. So at the end, we can get multiple videos and combine them together into one. That way, we can see with our own eyes the walker improves over time. This is where the next notebook comes in. So let's take a look. OK, so for this one, I have set up everything else exactly the same. The difference is that now instead of training it all at once, we're using a for loop, training it for 20 times and each time for 100,000 steps. Within each training step, we're also generating a video. So in the end, we'll have 20 videos saved in this new directory I created called videos. For the next cell, I'm combining all of these video into one. So let's run through it. So this training process is probably going to take some time. So I will come back once it's done. So the training has finished. As you can see on the left here, we have generated 20 videos. In the next cell, if I can, <laughs> if I can get there. In the next cell, we're going to just combine all these uh, videos together and make one final video called uh, replay all. So just run this and refresh our folder. We can see that we have generated this file, so let's visualize it. OK, obviously this video is going to be pretty long. I'll just speed it up a bit in post and show you the results here.
All right, that's pretty cool. Obviously, it's still not perfect yet, so feel free to play with it more, increase the time steps or change the parameters, and hopefully you get a better walker. Last but not least, let's push it to the Hugging Face model hub. Here, we need to use the Hugging Face libraries, and we first also need to log in with our token. If you run this cell, it's going to give you this pop-up. Here, if you don't have a Hugging Face account, go ahead and register for one. I'm going to go to my profile and go into settings. Over here at access tokens, I already have one. If you don't have one, make sure to create a new token and make sure you have the right privilege and just generate a new token. I'm going to copy my and go back to the notebook and paste it in here. So just log in with that. Okay, once we're logged in, Next, we'll just use the package to hub function. Uh, this function takes in all the relevant information of our model, upload it to the hub, and also generate replay. It's pretty clear. Uh, just make sure to fill in your own information, especially here, the repo ID. Make sure you're using your own account name, and this is the repository we're naming it. Once it's ready, just run this. Okay, so let's check on the Hugging Face website. If I go into my account here and here in models, now I have this model we just uploaded. Okay, and if we click on this, come inside, we can see this is our model and with all the relevant files inside. That's pretty neat. Before we end, the next step is completely optional. If you want, you can also load models from Hugging Face. Here is how you can do it. You just need to name the model you want. I think you can also load other people's model. You just need to replace it with the name and the... Here we're using the zip file over here. Make sure you're using this file. So feel free to take a look. If you find this video helpful, you know what to do. Smash the like button and get subscribed. Also, I will make these two notebooks available in the description below. Feel free to play with it. Comment if you have questions. Until next time, happy training.